step one in spearing, uh, finding a very quality spot that you feel confident in that you know pike are running. So, step one, find a spot. So yesterday evening I came out here and I drilled a whole bunch of holes. I fished this like previously in Cop Pike and um, what I was looking for was good weeds. So basically I drilled like 10 holes, found the weed edge and as soon as I found good milfoil and coontail, that's exactly where I'm going to drill my sight fishing hole. Disclaimer, every body of water and lake is a little bit different so if you've had better success spearing on rocks, sand, weeds, mud, um, go with your gut and uh, yeah, do what's best for you. Either way, today I've never speared this lake but I have caught a bunch of fish here on kind of these weed edges. So that's where I'm gonna set up and uh, hopefully it plays out good. Step two, once you've determined your spot, set up your shack, get everything kind of dialed and then cut your giant sight hole. Now when I was a kid, we used to spear out of these really old portable wooden shacks and they're super clunky, super cumbersome. Uh, the options out there nowadays for uh, a good shack you can potentially just fish out of and spear out of are huge. Um, this is a Clam X 600. It's a giant hub. If you guys have hubs or like hubs, I suggest upgrading. Pretty much all the hubs in the market now are thermal, extremely warm. You burn way less propane and um, you can set them up in like five minutes. So I got the shack set up. Now I'm going to probably drill the hole. If you guys still aren't convinced that electric is the deal, I don't know what to tell you. There's, there's a lot of ice here. Electric, electric is the deal. Besides electric augers being much lighter, cleaner, no smoke anywhere, um, probably their largest attribute is the reverse feature. All electric augers nowadays have reverse. You have slush in your hole, turn it to reverse, shoot it right back down there. So it's, it's the future. It's the future. Alrighty, once you have your perimeter drilled, basically we're just gonna connect the dots with a giant saw. And by giant saw, I truly mean a giant saw. Huge shout out to my good buddies, Kurt and Matt Dugas. Uh, they let me borrow this giant saw and some other spearing equipment that I don't have. So, huge shout out to you guys, thank you. Pros to spearing late in the year. Uh, pro, I can drive my vehicle right here, unload everything. Cons, uh, cutting a sight hole with like two and a half, three feet of ice, that's, that's a lot of cutting, a lot of ice. It's a decent amount of ice. Not bad, not bad. Alrighty guys, we're pretty well dialed in the house. Um, I've got everything situated here. I've got my hole cleaned out. I've got all my gear in here. Um, I've got one GoPro sitting kind of on the perimeter of the hole to see hopefully um, uh, the pike coming up. And then I've got one camera right over top looking down. Uh, to be honest, the water's a lot dirtier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I can't see very well. I'm sitting in like nine feet here, but I think I'm just gonna put my chub down maybe five or six feet. That's, um, that's all the farther I can really see. I can see a little bit of the weeds and then obviously like just sand and rock up here in my front. So um, I can still see, but it's not as clear as I'd like it. But um, yeah, hopefully this goes well. For now, I'm just gonna put one of those big decoy minnows right on a little harness, drop her down, and um, we sit and wait. So yeah, let's get baited up and um, let the spearing begin. Freaking giant bass. It's a giant bass. 
Oh my gosh, that's a big bass. That's probably a freaking six pound bass. Oh my goodness. And that is an end to uh, a pretty uneventful day spearing. I actually saw a lot of fish down there. I saw like six bass. Uh, one tiger muskie freaked me out. Thought he was gonna freaking smoke my deal and obviously you can't spear tiger muskies. And I think I saw one pike just kind of roll through the corner. Didn't seem interested. It's crazy to me. It was 40 degrees out today. Um, absolutely beautiful. Pretty low wind. Just um, great, 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 great weather after it's been extremely cold. So. I don't know why pike aren't running through. Maybe I'm in a bad spot. That's what I'm gonna probably chalk this up as. Just um, I'm not in the right area. I'm not around the fish. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely give it a shot tomorrow. See what happens. And um, yeah, I just, I wanna get one. I don't even care if it's big, small, medium. I just, I wanna get one. Last and definitely not least, never, ever, ever, ever forget to mark your spear hole. Get a bunch of sticks, get a bunch of trees, get anything, mark it. You don't want a snowmobile or car going through there. Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah, and that was that. Um, no luck. No luck at all. Saw a few bass roll in. Uh, one tiger muskie kind of shot in and out of the hole. That was pretty cool. I could see his patterns. and He doesn't really show up well on footage, so I won't show you guys it, but it was, it was pretty cool. Um, so I was confused because the weather was perfect. It was awesome out So I tried a completely different lake the next day uh, I went out with my dad and my mom stopped by for a little bit too and uh, Basically went a whole another nine hours and saw nothing but bass roll through no pike I can't believe that uh, pike in the winter are extremely active. They love to eat They're always cruising around so the fact that we didn't see one pike come through a sight hole um, that's that's all on me. That's on me a hundred percent. That's uh, I definitely wasn't around the fish The weather was beautiful. I know the fish were biting and on their feet So uh, I just need to do my homework next year find some more high percentage spots and uh, hopefully capitalize I'm extremely bummed right now because like after I'm getting back into spearing. I love doing it This is like probably my favorite way to ice fish uh, the season closes it closed yesterday and um, yeah, so I've got to wait all the way till next year, which is mind blowing to me that I haven't been shooting spearing videos all winter long because to tell you the truth, I love spearing more than any other type of ice fishing. It's like a mixture between deer hunting and ice fishing for me. Obviously you're ice fishing, but uh, when you cut the huge spear hole, it's so visual, it's like zero to 100. It feels like you're in a deer stand, you see nothing for hours and boom, all of a sudden you see one come in, you dip the spear in the water, shoot it down there and um, it's, it's a total adrenaline rush. If you guys have never tried spearing, I'd highly recommend it. I don't know if many people guide for it, or uh, I really don't know how many people do this in general. Um, so if you can find some buddies that have the gear and you can go out and give it a shot, obviously check your local regulations to see if it's uh, it's even legal in your state or your area. It's a total blast, total adrenaline rush. But um, thank you guys for watching this video, obviously all the way to the end. Before I go, I kinda wanna show you some cool things. Day one spearing, uh, I just used a giant decoy minnow the whole day, had him on a little harness, he was swimming around down there. Uh, that's how we've done it a lot in the past. But um, growing up, uh, the person who got me into spearing was my grandpa and my dad. Uh, we would use a giant sucker minnow like that, like a big decoy minnow, and then we would also use a decoy. So here's some of my grandpa's old decoys. And I tried this day two a little bit. I had my sucker minnow off to the right side of my hole and this decoy off to the left, but I don't know if you can see these or not. I use this one right here. It's got a weight in the bottom to kind of keep this thing equally weighted out when it's in the water. And then it's got metal fins on the side and you can kind of bend the metal fins to manipulate the action of your decoy. So if you rip it up, it'll shoot around your hole in a big circle. And basically the goal with spearing is just to get fish curious enough to come into your site and then you can get them. You don't even need them to bite. You just need to get them curious in there. So uh, popular ones, red and white, obviously. I know a lot of people do a lot of hand custom airbrushed ones and those are pretty cool, but uh, I love these because these are my grandpa. And obviously my grandpa and grandma kind of got me into spearing. So huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much, grandpa and grandma. I love you. And uh, thank you for this awesome decoy. Besides that, he has another one that's the same painted version of it. And then here's this. I don't know how old this is or if my grandpa hand made this, but it's got a couple spoons and a golf ball that's painted red. So I don't know if it just kind of made some noise and obviously a lot of flash down there. I don't know if that worked a lot for them, but uh, that's pretty cool. And then besides those two, my grandpa and grandma also gave me 
this giant decoy. Look how big this sucker is. And look at how many weights there are on the bottom just to get this thing weighted out evenly. Dang. And like I said, the goal is just to get the pike curious enough to come into your sight so that you can spear them. And uh, I should have probably tried this to be honest because I had zero luck and saw zero pike. So I don't know why I didn't try this to be honest. I was kind of scared of losing it. So I didn't really want to even put it in the water, but uh, same deal, metal fins on the side, red and white. That's a staple. But um, yeah, I, I love spearing so much. I promise you guys next year, I'm gonna shoot a ton of spearing videos and obviously kill a bunch of pike with my grandpa's old decoys. So I'm fired up for next year spearing. If you guys have any old gear, like old vintage lures, rods, reels, anything from loved ones, garage sales, family members, and you make videos on them or take pictures of them, please send them my way. I love to look at old vintage fishing gear. I love to see the progression of uh, kind of old gear and where it was and where it's came and the stuff that's still the same and what still works now that worked back then. I just, I love that stuff. So I'll link an email down below or you can post your video in the comments or anything like that. Maybe I'll highlight it on this channel, but uh, I love old gear and I love my grandpa and grandma's homemade old decoys. So yeah, I'm bumming. I'm bumming Spearin's closed, but uh, there's a lot of opportunities still left for late ice. Late ice can be a great time of year. If you can crush the fish. And um, yeah, spring's right around the corner. So I truly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I apologize I didn't get any pike. It wasn't without lack of effort. Over the course of two days, we probably stared down the hole uh, close to 20 hours and uh, didn't see a pike. But um, yeah, I truly appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned. I promise the next videos we're gonna crush the fish. And uh, I guess there's enough left to be said than stay tuned. And as always, let the adventure begin. See ya. Pretty babe, something ain't right. Got to find a way to move ahead. Oh, my pretty.